All right, welcome back to Kitchen Ambush. We are live again in Orange Beach, Alabama. Uh, and we are here at the World Food Championships and cannot tell you and express how excited we are to be here with Chef Elizabeth Faulkner. How are you doing? So good. I didn't, I, like, I didn't even know there was a beach in Alabama, so I'm pretty excited that I, I ran either. on the beach this morning. Yeah. They were like, you're going to Orange Beach. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, where exactly is that? I, yeah. Anyway, but it's, it's been a really cool day. Just showing people how to make some fun stuff with pe for f people that have allergies. And you did. You really were able to very smoothly overcome fears. You know, people have so much fear to go in a kitchen and, and cook and try different things for exactly the point you made about recipes. But you just made it very smooth and easy. Well, I think it's like if somebody comes into, somebody comes to your house, somebody comes for the holidays, somebody comes to your restaurant, and they've got something that you weren't expecting. It's like you don't have to freak out and throw a temper tantrum. You just right. need to like, okay. So what they're not going to be able to eat is, let's just say it's, um, you know, gluten, and you were going to serve your famous Parker House rolls. Right. Well, you don't have to just be like, well, you can't eat that. I mean, the fun part is when you can come up with something for those people. Yeah. And that's the challenge. It's like, for me, it's like all these food competition shows. Let that be your competition show. Right. And it's exciting because when you do, and instead of just walking away, that family member walking away with literally like a carrot and a piece of broccoli, you actually give them a plate that's theirs. It makes all the difference to that person. Right. And also, like, sometimes you make something specifically for that person, but what if it's that good that, like, everybody wants some of it? So, you know, might as well start thinking about all the... The, the allergy comes in and maybe it's a few different things and you figure out something to make make enough for everybody to try it right because then you might actually win some other all fans. Of a sudden, yeah all of a yeah. sudden now you've got that every year that's that dish you're making yeah that they call you for <laughs> and it's not just about the allergies it's about even the intolerances i know that yep. my five-year-old she has a huge intolerance to milk and she got very sad at, at the beginning because oh what do you mean ice cream i can't have ice cream but you like you said but, you try new things and she loves coconut ice cream and so right. do i so i make it now for all of us yeah yeah, yeah and, and exactly it's exciting. now everybody it's exciting. likes it it's exciting yeah so it's you know it's and but to be able to watch you you put together four different dishes uh you know even some ingredients you were looking at okay you know when you had the uh pimentos you oh, know, yeah. that again even in doing <laughs> something like for an allergy thing there can be those moments where something comes up that you're like Okay, it's not quite it, but here's how that ingredient works. So it's just kind of understanding food and, and how It's it really, works. I mean, like, cooking is like a lot of times like um, sort of like a mirror of just sort of dealing with the day. You know, you got to roll with the punches. Stuff is going to change. Something's not going to cook exactly right. But you can't just throw it away and start all over right. again. You know, like, pay attention while you're doing everything and then taste along the way. And it's kind of amazing because you can... We, and the, the thing about being a human being is we, even though we might have some... Um, dislikes or um, in things that we can, ingredients that we can't have. There are millions of ingredients around the world, so it's like right. you know, just stop sticking with the meat and potatoes concept. Right. Oh, expand your horizons. Look at different food. Look at different things that are out there. Because that that's a perfect point that I don't think I even addressed enough. Is there are so many ingredients in the world. Yeah. So if you're pulling one away, you still have thousands of different things to choose from. And it's just looking for those, you know, it's like when you write a speech. You don't want to say the same word over and over and over again, so you look for synonyms of the word. Right. And that's kind of the way the food works. It's totally true. And it's yeah. nice to teach that younger generation that. Because yep. if we start them early, then they'll be geared towards as they get older. Oh, I haven't tried that, but let me go ahead and do that. Yep. Well, here's the other thing, too, is like being a chef for you know, over two decades, I'm always looking for, you know, new ingredients that I haven't had. Right. So I'm always looking for something else. So for me, this is like another way to find that same kind of expression. It's like, oh, I would never necessarily put those things together because I wasn't taught that by my tradition right. or my ethnicity or whatever it is. But what happens when you do put them together? When you start to really break down, you know, the science of food, you're talking about similar categories. You're talking about starches and proteins and acid and trying to marry those things together so it's about you just figuring out what the alternatives are and, and working with it and that so it was so exciting to be a part of this i mean i know that I, it started it was funny when we were coming over it was a few and then there was more and then we ended up with a packed house yeah all to really kind of get an idea of and and really take away from it there was notes being written there was things being streamed facebook you know comments were being made all about what they learned from you today that was very really cool. cool. That's well, cool. So what's up guys. next for you? Uh, I've got to. I'm. I got to keep cooking. I'm. I'm going to be cooking down <laughs> in Palm Beach in uh, in about a month. Nice. So that'll be yeah. Different That's part of the, yeah. Different. Close to here, but other side of Florida. Right. Um, 
that's yeah, cool. cooking in Yosemite in a, in a couple months too. That's cool. I just cooked in France, so I never know. It's always <laughs> changing it up. It's like okay, on your phone, look, you're like, oh, I'm gonna be here tonight. That's why it doesn't really throw me off to have like random ingredients that I don't, I'm right. not expecting, or it's not exactly what yeah. kind I use. Yep. So I'm cool with that. Well, awesome. We won't take up too much of your time. We know you're busy. Thank you again. And where can they find you on social media if they want to follow you? Oh, my uh, Instagram and Twitter are both uh, Chef Faulkner. So Chef Faulkner on Instagram and Twitter. See where you're going to pop up next. And, and like, I have a Facebook fan page, too, called um, Chef Elizabeth Faulkner. So look it up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow around the world travels and dish travels. Yeah. Of where always, you're going next. Always talking through food. It's the best way to talk. You know, people tend to... to be much more welcoming with food. Mm -hmm. yes. So thank you again for watching at the World Food Championships. This is Kitchen Ambush live from Orange Beach, Alabama. I'm Vanessa Lang. Elizabeth Walker. <laughs> I'm Mark Conway. We'll see you again soon with some more great competition action. Catch you in a minute. Thanks. <laughs>